for morning. How are you? I'm fine. How's Monica? I heard you calling maternity. She spent a good night. Considering everything that you and she and Gail went through the night of delivery, I'd say her progress was amazingly fast. Leslie, I wish you would get some rest before the festivities tomorrow. Why? Don't you think my progress has been amazingly fast? My point is that Monica is no longer our primary consideration. Well, if that's so, I don't really understand why you spend so much time on the phone checking up on her or talking about her. Leslie, because I'm trying to get through to you. We gave Monica the will to live. You and I decided in the middle of the crisis what had to be done, and we did it. I told her I loved her. I made her believe that. You backed me up when we had to. It worked. As you said, amazingly fast. Leslie, I cannot go on making her concerns more important than yours. Really? That surprises me. I love you. I've always loved you. I think you know that I always will. Now, we have to discuss this. We have to put everything right out in the open. We have to put it into a proper perspective and get on with our lives. Now, what I did, I am sorry about. I couldn't be any sorrier. There were reasons. I've given you those reasons already. I think now it's only a matter of are you woman enough to forgive me? What did you just say? I said, are you woman enough to forgive me? That's what I thought you said. Too much woman to forgive you. Don't play word games. Are you man enough to give me a divorce? I don't want a divorce. You must be out of your mind. No, no, I'm I'm quite sane. Two miserable, lonely, unhappy people thrown together for one night. Now, they are both estranged from their marriage partners, but they are trying to find comfort and love. One night, something that happened one time and never again. Are you going to tell me that, that that can ruin all the love and devotion that we have had these years? I can't even believe how blind you're being. That little fling of yours with Monica. All right, all right, all right. That never happened before. One night only never happened again with Monica. I could easily overlook and forget. It's your son with Monica that I can't forget. Leslie, the only evidence you have that it is my son is that in a moment of delirium, Monica, when she thought she might be dying when her baby was being born, was to say that I was the father. Now, she swore to me a number of times that she was on the pill that night. She lied! A woman knows her own menstrual cycle. She knows what man is around when. Monica is a doctor. She certainly has detailed knowledge of the ovulation procedure. I say she lied. And as for the night the baby was born, I'm the one that was there. I'm the one that heard it. And I'm telling you, she told the truth then. She thought she was dying. That is your baby. The son you wanted so desperately, you have. It's just that it happens to be Monica's. Not mine. No, please, please don't touch me, please. Leslie, I'm... No, no, I, I'm not crying. I'm not crying and I'm not going to cry. And it's, it's not because of... It's not because of you. It's because of the baby that I wanted to have with you. And all that time that I knew that I couldn't and I was dying inside, you knew that Monica was going to give you a son and it just tears me apart. Why can't I make you see that? You have to believe me, Leslie. It's you I want. You, not a son that you can't have. That is why I came back to you after that night. You didn't come back to me for one single reason except pity. Well, I reject your pity. It was not pity. It was love. Everything I said the morning after she... her son was born 
was true. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. We are not talking about the morning the baby was born. We are talking about the night of Laura's accident. And that night, Monica had your love. And I had your pity. Leslie, please. No, no, just no more lies. Okay, I don't want to hear any more lies. Monica is fine now. One word of love from you and she lives. But I live it's so me. simple. All you have to do is go to her. Claim her. Claim your son and the three of you can live happily ever after. Ah, that's going to make everything all right. No, no it won't. But I won't have to be here watching Alan look at that baby with love and pride and joy as his heir. And I won't have to watch you see your son grow up as Alan Quartermain Jr. And for heaven's sake, whatever you do, you've got to be very careful. And nobody sees you looking at the baby the way you're bound to sooner or later. I could hate you for that. All right. I will stay in this house until after the holidays. Then I'll move out and we'll file for a divorce. Leslie, I'm going to say this one last time, very quietly. There will be no divorce. I will not even discuss it. Now, as to moving out of this house, I will be the one who goes. Oh, no, no, that's yes. the point. I won't even argue with you. This is your home. This is your family's home. Your roots are here. I know your emotional attachment to this house. It's exactly why I'm going to be the one who goes. I am tired. I am sick and tired of memories. If you won't stay in this house as my wife, then I want no commitments of any kind, period. Even if you do go, what happens then? If you think we still can't make a go of it, then I will agree to a temporary separation. How long is temporary? Three months. Four. I... Does that mean you'll give me three or four months to decide I can't live without you? Is that it? I wouldn't have been quite that arrogant about it. No. Do you mean the great Dr. Weber has lost his arrogance? I'll be the first to admit that I am arrogant about some things. I think I'm a fine surgeon, but I have never, ever been arrogant about my love for you. Of course not, because you're perfect. You're oh. Mr. Perfection. I'm the only one who's ever wrong. Sarah. Rick, it's Christmas Eve. What is it that you want? I will accept a temporary separation. It is not what I want. What I want is that you stay in our home and we share our love. We could make this marriage work if you would just try. What kind of a marriage can it be when one of the partners has a baby with someone else? I love you. You love me.